Okay, uh, this time we're going to do a reduced fraction uh, program. Uh, we're going to use functions and procedures to do it. Uh, so this is the design view. You can pause and make it. Um, just a couple things. Uh, this text box, I'm calling it txt num. And then this one, I'm going to call it txt deno for denominator. And then I got button calculate. And I also got a label here um, to display the answer. And I just call it LBL answer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and double click on that button and just insert our click event. And I'm going to leave the comments aside for now. So uh, we're going to have to think for a moment. So what, we're, what we got to do is we got to get these two numbers from um, the design view. And we're going to keep them because my answer is going to say something like the fraction and then whatever they entered reduces to and then I'm going to give the answer. So I do need to keep those original values. So I'm going to go dim numerator as integer and it's going to be the value from txt numerator dot text and then I'm going to go dim denominator as integer and that's going to be the value from txt denominator dot text okay so now that we got those two things um, stored inside variables I'm going to do this a little bit of a different way for you guys I'm going to program this as if I don't didn't know what functions and procedures were um, and then after once I have my program working I'm gonna take it and I'm going to incorporate procedures and functions so you kind of see the thought process that maybe goes into that so I'm just gonna move along on our merry way um, our first step if we write some pseudocode here is gonna be um, let's just say I have um, my numerator is 12 my denominator is 16 so I need to figure out which one the smallest number is Okay, because there's no point of me trying to divide 12 by 13. So my first step is, you know, figure out which um, number is smallest. Because when I, when I run my loop, um, I'm only going to go from 2 up to the smallest number. There's no point trying anything higher. So once I do that, I'm going to do a for loop that starts at 2 and ends at the smallest number. Um, my for loop is going to have to sort of figure out for me um, basically whether or not my current divisor evenly divides each number. And we know that anytime we're talking about whether something evenly divides something else, we're going to use uh, mo module division. Module division, right, equals zero. Right, so if something, if we divide something and we and we look at the remainder, if the remainder is zero, that means it's dividing evenly, and that should basically do it. Once we have that, once we have our uh, divisor, we're going to reduce our fraction using our divisor, and then we're going to display our answer. Okay, so this is how I would do my pseudocode as I'm figuring out my program. Many of you are missing this step and you're just trying to figure it out without any real plan like you need a plan you need to think about it probably work out a, a question on paper so you can see like how you do it and then try to turn it into um, code so let's do that first step I do believe I'm gonna need a variable for that so I'm gonna just make a brand new variable I was gonna call it low okay and I, I don't know what it's gonna be but I'm gonna use an if statement so I'm gonna say if the numerator is less than the denominator, well, if, oh, got a typo, should have used the IntelliSense. There we go. So if the numerator is less than the denominator, well, then my low number is going to become my numerator. Okay. Otherwise, there's only one other option. Um, if that's not the case, then my low number is going to be my denominator. So now that I have that, I can go to my next thing. And I'm going to use a for loop that starts at 2. Okay, so for a for loop, I'm going to say 4. And I'm going to call my counter current divisor as integer. And it's going to start at the low number. And we're going to go, oh, sorry. We're going to start at 2. We're going to keep looping until we get to the low number. All right, it's going to automatically increment by 1. This piece, this comment is going to go in here. Okay, so inside here, um, I'm going to 
need another variable, actually. So we're going to do another variable up here. We need a variable to store our greatest common divisor. So we'll do it up here. We'll initialize it. Well, we'll initialize it to 1. We're going to make our if statement. So we're going to say if... Can you close that door, Hagen? Thanks. Or someone. So if the numerator mod the low number is 0 and the denominator mod the low number is 0 then... Oh, you're right. Why am I modding the low number? I shouldn't be. I should be using current divisor. Oh, it's a good thing we're such a good team. Right, so we're going to check. Hey, my current divisor divides my numerator evenly and my denominator evenly. Well, that means that my greatest common divisor is whatever my current divisor currently is. And that's it. That's all this loop needs to do. So we're going to start on 2. And in our example of saying our numerator being 12 it's gonna, and our denominator being 16, it's going to try 2. 2 will work. So at some point, my current divisor or my GCD will be 2. And then it's going to try 3 which doesn't work for the denominator. It's going to try 4. 4 will work. So my GCD will be 4 at some point. And then it's going to try 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? And the only one that's going to work for both is going to be 4. Um, so, okay. Now that we got um, our for loop all done, we're going to go ahead and reduce our fraction using our divisor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just make some new variables for that. So I'm going to go dim... I'm going to go reduced numerator as integer, and it's going to become uh, what the current numerator is divided by my GCD. And then I'm going to go reduced denominator as integer, and very similar. I'm going to take my denominator and divide by the GCD. Wonderful. Now I'm ready to display my answer. So in my label, I'm going to go me.lbl answer.text. And I'd like it to say the original fraction. So I'm going to say the fraction, leave a space, string concatenation character, numerator, string concatenation character. We're going to do a division line, string concatenation character, denominator, string concatenation character, Reduces to, and then string concatenation character, we're going to go our reduced numerator and a division symbol. Oops. Another string concatenation character and our reduced denominator. That should do it. Just leave that up on the screen for a moment. You can pause the video. And I'm going to run it now. See if this works. So if I put in the numerator 12, denominator 16, hit reduce, it appears to work. That's fraction 12 over 16 reduces to 3 over 4. Thanks. Well, actually, we're not done yet. So what I did this time is I did it all just without any procedures or functions. I'm now going to go in and replace things with procedures and functions wherever it's appropriate. Okay, so now we're going to look at this. We're going to break it down. We're going to turn things into functions and procedures as we need. So basically, um, if you do your comments and your planning, that sort of helps you do that because I look at this and I'm like, well, that's a task. So I could potentially turn this into a function. It'd be a short one. It might be a bit redundant, but just for the practice, it'd be good. Um, so I'm going to turn this into a function. And I think my function is going to look something like this. So I'm going to go dim low as integer. And then I'd like to make my function, I'm going to call it um, lowest. And for lowest to work, it's going to need the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to pass it the numerator and the denominator to do its job. Okay, now everything is going to be underlined in red now because I haven't programmed this function yet. Okay, but I'm going to grab this code because I can basically use that in my function. I'm going to go outside my sub procedure and I'm going to go ahead and create my lowest function. Returns the low number between two integers. And that's very general, so I could use it in other contexts as well. So here we go, function lowest, and everything's going to be by val. 
And I'm just going to go by val numerator. Actually, I'm going to go by val num1 as integer just to make it as general as possible. And by val num2 as integer. And it's going to return an integer. Hit enter. And now you got your function. And I'm basically going to copy and paste that code in there. And it's going to change it. So I don't, I'm not calling it numerator anymore. I'm calling it num1. So I'm going to copy and paste that. So if num1 is less than, well, this should be num2. And I don't have this variable. So I'm going to go ahead and make it. So I'm just going to go dim low as integer. And in this case, the low number wouldn't become the numerator. It would be num1. That would be the low number. Otherwise, the low number is num2. And once that if does its thing, I can go ahead and return the low number. And we're done. Put a couple extra spaces in there so it looks nice. All right. So we got our lowest function working. Let's go back and check. We can see here in our code that this is now no longer underlined in red. So the compiler is happy with it. And we're going to go ahead and uh, turn this into a function because at the end of the day um, this is really just going to return our gcd okay so i'm going to try to make my function ahead of time so i got my dim gcd as integer instead of making it become one i'm going to call gcd and gcd is going to need a couple things to work it's going to need my numerator and my denominator and i think that's all it needs to work So again, that is going to be underlined in red. Let's copy and let's cut this paste or cut that code out. And we're going to go down below and we're going to make another function. Um, so we're going to go function gcd. And again, I'm going to generalize it. So I'm going to go uh, num1 as integer and byval num2 as integer. Um, you know that I'm thinking. Like GCD is probably pretty specific to numerators and denominators, but not necessarily. So I'm actually happy to call it num1 and num2. I'm going to pop my code in there for now, and we'll be changing the variables. Um, before I do that, though, I just want to put a little comment here and just say function GCD returns the greatest common divisor between two numbers. All right. Um, now, here's the nice thing about functions. So I need to know the low number. OK, so I have options. I can either pass the low number to this function, or I can call this function again inside here. I'm going to choose to just pass the low number to the function. OK, so we're going to tack that in. So down here. Inside my function gcd, I'm going to go comma and add a byval low as integer. And there's advantages and disadvantages to doing this. Like if I want this to be a standalone function that does everything I need to do for gcd, I would probably want to do this inside the function. But because it's inside this program where I have my function lowest already, um, I'm just going to choose to do it this way. OK? So we will continue to have our for loop. Um, and now this is all going to work because we have a, a parameter called low. We're just going to have to change this. So this is going to be if num1 mod the current divisor and num2 mod the current divisor is 0, then my GCD is the current divisor. And I'm going to have to go ahead and declare a dim GCD as integer. And then once this for loop does its thing, we need to make sure we have return GCD because that is our answer that we're looking for. So there's not a lot of extra coding involved. We're just simply taking that one specific thing, putting it off in its own little function here. OK, we do have an issue here. Um, uh, we can't have a variable called GCD and a function called GCD. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with the words greatest common divisor. I'm going to copy that. And then I got to do the same thing down here for the function name. 
And then that's going to get rid of all those errors. And now I have everything with functions, so I'm going to compile. And use my famous example of 12 over 16. We can see that it reduces to 3 over 4. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.